Hey y'all, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to show you the most amazing hunt we've ever been on, and it was a dream hunt of mine for our next trip to South Africa. This is an epic hunt. It's the most awesome hunt I have ever filmed. Emotions were up and down, adrenaline was flowing, and I have never been a part of a hunt this exciting. So you guys stay with us. This is a longer video, but I promise it is worth the watch. There is so much action. There's so much defeat and heartache and victory in the end. So stick with us, check this video out, and be sure to hit the like button on this video if you enjoy watching our content. So after our first African safari, I fell in love with the Gemsbok Oryx. I just love the way they look, I love the way that they behave, the way that they looked whenever they ran across the field. They are just a beautiful, unique, and amazing animal. So ever since then, I had been dreaming of getting a Gemsbok Oryx. So we were determined to get this Oryx. This was Kayla's favorite animal, and so we started with an early morning. We got up before daylight and we were at the hunting area. Uh, as soon as the sun came up, we started moving through this big, big area and we were seeing all kinds of awesome animals. During our ride in the safari truck, we saw some animals that were what we would consider trophy animals. Uh, one was a giant blessed block that was actually on the, the hit list, but we didn't want to shoot in this area because it was a, a really good area that the oryx could be in. So we didn't want to disturb anything. Uh, we moved along and then a real temptation ran out. I was very tempted by this golden wildebeest and he ran out very cool. Um, almost reddish color to him. With like a blonde mane and tail. Yeah, he ran across and I told Ari, how much for that one right there? How much is he, Ari? How much is he? I thought about being selfish and, and taking over the hunt at that moment. But he had already taken over the first hunt yeah. for the black wildebeest. <laughs> so I, uh, I refrained and I think I may add that to my, my safari list next year. So after we'd seen all these cool animals, we moved into an area that's really thick brush. The Gimsbach uh, typically bed there. And, and sure enough, as we pulled into this thick area, they jumped up and took off running up the hill and they stopped and gave us just a brief minute to, to take a look. We, we had something to go off of now, so uh, pretty soon we're gonna be off the truck and stalking, hopefully to get a shot on a game spot. It's a good one in the back, they just crossed. <laughs> 
many big males are there there's a herd of youngsters um, in here as well but we spotted a big bull up here we'll probably get off now and see if we can stalk, uh, stalk him and get close up to him and take a good shot on him there's a lot of animals in there yeah it's gonna be tough build a beer zebra so yeah luckily that group split up Wait to the this one we'll try we'll try to spook them so they can get out of our way so obviously we had spooked the gims box pretty good so we decided to not pressure them too much we let them go off and kind of calm down a little bit mm -hmm. and then after they were out of sight william started to track them and so as we're tracking we actually come across a rhino jawbone yeah it's a bottom jaw and bottom jaw um and we realized that there had been poachers in the area yeah so this was one of the really sad parts of our trip um, we hate to see animals poached. Uh, we hate to see um, the folks that own this hunting area lose money. Uh, we also hate to see animals taken and wasted. Uh, they, the poachers hunted this rhino just specifically for the ivory. It's very sad. So um, this was something that kind of fired us up a little bit, made us angry, but right now we're hot on the trail of the Oryx. It's time to move on and keep pressing to see if we can get a shot. So this hunting area is pretty, it's an open grassy area with some hills and these gims box are so smart. Mm -hmm. And so they yeah. use that to their advantage to be able to see us at all times. And when you're just looking out there, it doesn't look like it's that far, but when you start walking, <laughs> it is far. It's a workout. So Ari found a bush or a group of bushes just big enough for us to get behind to where we could kind of stay hidden from the Gims Buck Oryx. Yeah, it's the perfect setup. Ari got us right into position. We knew the, the Oryx were just on the other side and uh, tensions are high right here. We're, we're closing in on them and uh, right at the last minute, it looked like they turned and were coming back toward us. So as we got in position, now we could no longer see where the Oryx were, uh, but quickly we found out that they were a little closer than we had anticipated.
we are looking for is not in that. Okay. He went off, I think. Uh -uh. I heard him. Adrenaline, <laughs> <Yeah>. huh? <laughs> They're so pretty. There's two or three younger bulls, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not shooters. Man, that was a close call. These orcs came within feet of us, all in a flash, just running in front of us. Uh, two, two in front, the rest around the back of us, and then they grouped back up. And this was as close as you could get. I honestly thought we might get impaled there for a minute, <laughs> but uh, there was not a shooter bull in this group. Ari made that decision quickly once they passed by. We didn't want to shoot any of these. And the rest of the day was a long, hard hunt. We were sunburned, we stalked forever, our legs were tired, we were hungry. Even though the day ended in disappointment and we didn't get the Gemsbach Oryx, the close encounter was totally worth the whole day. They are just so beautiful and they were in their natural habitat. And so it was so cool to just get to experience that firsthand and it, it really just made a hard day totally worth it. So for day two of the Gimsbach Oryx hunt, we are at a new ranch in a different area. So within the first like five minutes of being on this ranch, we already see the Gimsbach Oryx. Yeah, we're feeling pretty good about this because we're already on them and Ari glasses through this group and there's the one we're after in here. So a quick stalk uh, around a big group of trees puts us in position. And so we worked our way through there and uh, just got up to where we needed to be so that we could get a shot at these oryx. You see where the golden oryx are? Yes. I think the one to the right. Just keep it. Just keep it. Okay, you see he's quartering away? Yep. Just a little bit right off the shoulder. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Did he run? Yeah, you were high. Shot over it? No, it hit him in the back. Oh, crap. So y'all heard me say before time and time again that I am a one shot, one kill kind of hunter. Um, I try to make sure that all of my shots are absolutely perfect. And so when I made this one, I'm not used to shooting that far. And so I ended up shooting a little bit higher than I wanted to, really only by a couple inches, mm -hmm. but it still did not knock him down. And so not only is it disappointing to not get the animal that you've been so excited about, but also that's hard for me because that's never happened to me before. Yeah, so this, this Gimsbach joined back with the group and they took off and it was, it was just full speed into the brush. Uh, we were actually able to drive the truck around and find them along a big, big water hole. Uh, it was a huge marsh and we, we got a glimpse of them. 
they go off again. So we, uh, we, were, we were really uh, frustrated, just deflated, defeated. There's so many words for it. Um, it was like a punch in the gut to see these animals run off. And so um, we learned the lesson in the cornfields chasing the warthogs that technology is our friend. And so Ari said, launch that drone and you go find those things. <laughs> so here we go, in the air with the drone and let's see if we can find them. So we utilized the drone because the Gimsbach had moved from the more open area into a more wooded area. And so we used the bird's eye view to our advantage because we couldn't see through the trees. Yeah, and quickly I found this group of oryx. I could see them moving through the, the brush. From ground level, you could see nothing. From up high, it was sparse enough trees where you could see them. And so uh, Ari, William, and Kayla all jump out of the truck um, I stay at the truck with our driver and they go skirting around and we're radioing back and forth like, okay, keep going, keep going, all right, now stop. And you'll be able to see here in these videos them working around this road, getting ready for me to push these Oryx back out. So I've never uh, really like worked an animal like this with a drone and I wouldn't normally be a fan of this um, other than the fact that this, was, this animal was wounded and we were doing everything possible to put another shot on him to put him down. And we, uh, we, found, we got the oryx right in the road and I'm, my heart's even beating just thinking about <laughs> it right now. But I'm at the truck, I'm literally shaking holding my drone remote. You think you're shaking? <laughs> so. Here they come, um, and I'm trying to figure out how much pressure I can put on these animals without them spooking. And so um, they decided they weren't gonna hang out. They knew that Ari, Kayla, and William were there. And so they took off, and I tried to stop them, shoot down with the drone and stop them, but they wouldn't. So it's back up to go put them back where I need them again. Since they were so far away, it was very hard for us to tell which one was the wounded one. Mm -hmm. I had actually hit some cartilage in his neck, which is a lot like in the top of your ear or your nose. And so he wasn't really bleeding that much and he only had a little bit of blood on one side. So if he was turned the wrong way, we really couldn't tell which one he was. Yeah, and they all grouped together really close. So our game plan was, I was gonna fly the drone down and uh, find the one that was the wounded one, and then uh, kind of swing back and forth to try and mark him, and also we were radioing in saying, okay, he's, he's near the drone now, uh, 
and this made for some excellent footage. I was basically like a cutting horse, <laughs> but in drone form. So this is, uh, this is some of the most epic hunting footage I have ever seen and ever filmed. Uh, being this close to the animals with a camera, with a drone, was insane. And it was, it was an adrenaline rush for me, but also for Kayla and Ari and William as well. That's the drone. Yes. He's so close to him. Oh my gosh. Just, just make sure if you see him again, you know what you're looking for now. Let's go for it. Oh. Finally, with only 10% battery remaining, I put enough pressure on this Oryx with the drone to spook him around the group, and Kayla was ready with the rifle. Yes, you hit him. He's going to the right. shot I knew that it had hit I could hear it but obviously large animals like this they don't just fall down immediately and so he started to run and I had to take my eyes off the scope I could not bear to watch him run away from me again and so you can hear me going is he down is he down and sure enough he was thank goodness and that was just the moment where I could finally let all the emotions go I could let you know, the anxiety, the excitement, the, the disappointment, I could just let it all go and finally be so excited about harvesting this animal that I've been dreaming about for a long time. Go 
Congratulations! Come and look at it. <laughs> you see, it's perfect, perfect hard shot. We could hear you. We could hear you when after it went down. It's like, I wonder what is he cheering about? We're missing the drone or eating the oryx. Like, <laughs> now we can take photos. <laughs> yes. <Whoa. Woo. laughs> you got it. The oryx. <laughs> <laughs> Tears of happiness. <laughs> take it in, take it in. I get drone driver of the year award. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 wait, wait. No, hey, hey. I'll take that. You like that. <laughs> not to cry. Um, this is at least eight months in the making. Um, last time we were here I fell in love with the Gimsbog Oryx and that's all I've been able to think about um, and he's definitely made us work for it. Um, it's taken us almost two full days of hunting to finally get him so it's a big reward. So yeah finally we are here sitting with uh, your beautiful Gimsbog. Um, yeah it was a tough day. We started off, we finally um, get to the earth and we finally got this one picked out and yeah, you made a, sh a shot on it, it was a little bit high and it ran off but it went to in a thick area so yeah and then from there on we, I knew we went in there and we had some technology with us so we sent up the drone and see if we can spot them and yeah finally we got them and we uh, stalked towards them, walk up to them and sit down and we used the technology just to keep them together because they the rest of the herd was protecting him the whole time so yeah and yeah finally opened up and he put a perfect shot on me in and this is the end result congratulations Thank and you. i'm happy <laughs> So we just want to give a huge thank you to Ari and the whole crew and the owner of the ranch who allowed us to have this amazing hunt, this amazing moment. And thank you to my husband who is working so hard to make sure that this could happen for me um, because this was so important to me. And so if you are interested in booking an African safari, we can help you out with that. We can help you with with flights and um, tra airport transportation and anything that you need to know. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, check us out on Facebook. You can find more info about the Africa hunts on our website, teamswampstompllc.com. And you guys stay tuned for more East Texas hunting action and maybe some more African hunts coming up soon.